It is party time. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show. It is Thursday off the rails. The Puppet Master Mark, Crazy Chris Cruz, Super Chris Cruz. Crazy Chris, I don't know what I want to do yet. Uh, and uh, let's go, Brandon. I love Brandon. Uh, all hanging out over there, driving us into the nether regions of all things insanity. Get right into it. My man, look what I dug up. Old Graham Allen in the hot seat. First of all. Here I am. I'm there, here. We're you, back. You, we're back. Yeah. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> And my phone talk, immediately begins ringing you talk as about, soon as we start doing you this. You talk about going full circle, baby. <laughs> full circle. I love it, man. I'm glad to be back. You look beautiful. I do. The uh, Years ago, years ago, Graham calls me on the phone. He said, hey, I'm starting a podcast. I want you to uh, come be a guest on the deal. I fly to Washington, D.C. to be on this thing. Yeah. Wound True up story. meeting with the now some of the executives from Blaze mm -hmm. who said, "Hey, you you come on the show." I pushed back for about six, seven, eight months. I don't know, and wound up bam. Yep. So we were family for a little while. Yeah, and you're still here. Yeah. That's the coolest thing about it is, uh, uh, I am. Uh, You've been all over the world. I did. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere since then but yeah no uh yeah we, we go we go way back man it's been a, it's been yeah, a we long go way back it's been it's getting to a point where the journey is so long yeah we can't even talk about it anymore because well, there's me, not enough let me, time let me give everybody a brief rundown of this thing of just how well all <laughs> this is going now i'm still here i'm in the basement y'all didn't know that the blaze studios has a basement mm -hmm. i'm down in the basement oh yeah yeah we're in here uh uh graham like they used to have me on Fox News, Graham on Fox News, me and Graham on Fox News. At yeah. We were in New York City together. My on very Fox first News. Fox News hit, you took me along it, to it, the Fox News hit. Yeah. And so we're at Graham, they still let Graham come do stuff. <laughs> I, me, I'm just in the basement <laughs> at the Blaze. Graham's on stage with President Trump. He's he's hanging with Trump. They, it, they, they text each other. They send each other memes. Yeah. Not me. Uh, I'm hey, in the basement. Hey, man, look. So serious, serious talk, all right? If if you – I don't know if the listeners – if you ever get a chance to talk at a Trump rally, let me tell you something. Me and you have given a lot of speeches yeah. in our lives, okay? Especially both of us failed uh, campaigns <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> at the end. Right. Uh, but, but, man, you stand up there, and there's 35-something thousand people staring back at you. Even the most experienced speakers will pucker just a little bit because you're like, man, please don't mess this up. A lot of people. Man, there was a chick there at the rally praying, and her phone goes off while she's praying in front of, like, at this point, 50,000 people. Phone goes off, middle of the prayer. I'm in the back, right? I'm thinking, man, this is your moment, chick. Do this the right way. Answer the phone and say, yes, Lord. This is your moment. <laughs> <laughs> and she messes it up and just just like she gets so she got flustered. she gets so flustered because i realized she wasn't even praying from her soul she was reading the prayer yeah off of a thing if you've got to read your prayer don't you're, be the person praying at the trump rally you're not That's praying. yeah you're not praying you're receiving yeah. i'll catch grief for that and i know but <laughs> I, you're, I don't you're, care it's i true. don't care i i that you one of the things talking about campaigning when I was campaigning, and we would go to these campaign events, and these people would roll out their scrolls, so to speak, <laughs> and they would start, you know, uh, reading their prayer. I'd be like, "This is not like stop it," because more times than not, it turned into a message for the people out in the room than yeah. it was a, a talking to the Lord. Yes, but yeah, when you but I I was glad to see you did the most recent Trump rally in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's good. And uh, but anyway, your journeys are they're all I never know. I just check things out, see where you are. Yeah, see yep. what's going on. Sa sa same here with you, buddy. I'm proud of you. Uh, it's uh, it it's it's really cool. I realize how old I'm getting with this stuff <laughs> now. And, and, and me and you both, uh, we have witnessed the rise of certain social media platforms, the fall of them. We've wi we've witnessed the 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 days of the you know 100 million viewed videos in the fall of them and now yeah. now, now we're living through elon musk twitter and uh me and you are turning into the old guys now uh we're fossils yeah we are we it, are it took us five years to become fossils <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, I, uh, somebody, and, and I know you get this a lot too, and somebody said this to me the other day, you know, everybody loves what we're doing, the the, the long form content, the, the, the more in-depth conversations, very much like what you do these days. But somebody, every once in a while, I'm sure you get it with the Facebook poke and yeah. everything like that. Every once in a while, people come up to me, they're like, you know, man, I love everything you do. 
but you know sometimes i miss the old graham you know like the old yeah. the old daily rants graham and i actually saw this video which i thought was super impactful right uh and it came from eminem of all people all right there's this reel going around of eminem he's in the back of a car and he's like uh, talking about people saying the same thing to him you know people tell me sometimes they miss the old eminem and you know and he said what i think they actually mean when they say that is they miss that that rage that angst that yeah. in your face thing very much like me and you used to have and 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 he said you know i i don't have rage anymore i'm still passionate very passionate but i'm older now i'm older now i you know, i don't have this rage inside of me anymore and, and so the delivery is different but the passion is still there and so it's been very cool to see you and myself how do you respond though to people when they ask you that I when just, they mention that to you, I, I tell them, I tell them uh, that, well, you, me, and you have known each other a long time. I am actually a very quiet person and a very introverted, it's true, yeah, and a very that's, introverted that's a point, person, yeah. and most people don't get that because as soon as the cameras turn on, I'm bam, I'm here, I'm ready to go. But when we go out and things like that, you're the life of the party, and I'm kind of sitting over in the back, minding my own business, kind of yeah. thing. And so it just so happened that what took off initially was that that tiny part of me that gets upset from time to time yeah. and so i really played into that character because that's what was working at the time and and i'm actually really proud that you know the daily rants and all that stuff really doesn't exist anymore it, it's it's graham allen now and um and and i'm really proud of how we that's what i tell everybody i'm really proud that that people have gotten to know me the the more totality of who i am uh and and the audience is getting older with us and yeah. so you know we're, we're kind of taking it would be really awkward now i feel like at my age now to still be screaming in a truck uh <laughs> kind of thing you know i mean it comes a point where that's no longer like oh this is cool it's like wow this guy's weird it's like, like revisiting the brady bunch you know yeah, they're all adults yeah, yeah yeah it's like wow does this guy have a job yet or, or what's so what is going on well to your point i mean i used to catch grief all the time for what does this guy do he just always sits in his truck he doesn't have a job you don't you know no. and now they're like we want you to go back to the truck and i'm like we want the dog in the back seat well my ex took the dog so it's kind of hard to recapture that magic <laughs> you are um, you are a walking country song right now i really now. am um <laughs> i want to write a song about elon musk building an electric truck that leaves you yep. right so that's that's yep. <laughs> uh that'd be a very modern country song. we got to talk about twitter we, and we're going to we, and say, we i'm going to bring that up here in just a second but you know i i keep telling people i miss the truck stuff as well yeah because they were so much fun but now because of the censorship that's out there it, the people don't see them correct you yeah. can do them yeah but, but nobody's going to see them yep. and believe it or not there's a lot of brain power that went into making those oh, things. Oh, a constant. Yeah. People have no idea. Because I used to do skits yeah. beforehand, and then, like, I'd snap my fingers, and then our friend Matt Lida would appear in yeah. the truck and all these things. Like, people have no idea how much time, thought, energy, creative content. And dealing with Matt Lida. Yeah. Well, yes. And then babysitting. <laughs> you think? Babysitting, you now. babysitting a grown man yeah. uh, at the same time. No, Siri. Siri is working right now. Do not call Matt Lida, Siri. <laughs> uh, and, and anyway, and, and so... Uh, also, we're just so much busier than we used to be. You know, the, those were the early days. That's when you're we were busier. when we were trying. You're busy you're too, busier. man. I don't and, do and, and 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 we were trying to 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 break through then. But now we're so busy. Like yeah. I'm here and I'm speaking here and I'm traveling here, just like you. And I'm I'm literally am traveling here right now to be on this show. And then I've got another show after this. And and it's just life is life is a lot busier these days. Speaking of Twitter, I want to I want to bring another person on here real quick uh if they will make their way sarah, over to the set sarah yeah come I, on <laughs> speaking of twitter so elon musk with this you know buying, buying uh, you're gonna have to like i don't know you're, no you i want you sit, to come over here just want you to get over here and get by me <laughs> just <laughs> just get over and get by me come, come over here get close maybe she should be get, by get, me i'm the get, guest no, no, what no, is no, happening no. Uh, sarah has gained eighty thousand. <laughs> i thought you were fixing to say <laughs> something completely <laughs> different well, okay go ahead i'm sorry uh no wait um 80, new followers on twitter in what 36 hours mm -hmm. 
And now we're pre-taping this. If you're watching it Thursday, we're now three days into this process. Yeah. So she's probably got a million at this point. Yeah. I wish. That's I what, wish. If well, you would just do Onlyfans, it would really be... <laughs> I mean, we wouldn't even, you would own this building. Wow, this is the <laughs> unfiltered this Graham Allen. Look at him. I, so it, it's so crazy, too, because I'm not saying anything that I find to be controversial. It's just undisputed facts, like men cannot have periods. Right. Yeah, I, and you've inspired me. <sighs> Bigot. Like I even wow. said, has anybody wow. seen a man have an abortion, right? Right. Nobody. They're going to make a movie about it next. Yeah, if, if, men can, if men can get pregnant, why aren't they getting abortions? I don't hear about that. I know. So. And people are just, they're, but they're dying for this because they feel like they haven't been able to speak their mind in so long. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I, I'm excited about it. I think it's great. Um, I'm excited to hear your thoughts about the whole thing. I still got my reservations. Yeah. Uh, nothing has been official yet. Uh, but, but I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens here. Uh, you know. I'm excited to see if I lose my account. I'm yeah, so that'll be that'll be the next thing. So ironically, I I, I posted something on Twitter, and I, I copied Sarah because she had already said everything in separate tweets. So I was like, well, I just got to put it all in one tweet now, and I did that, and then I posted on Twitter and I copied it, and 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 you know I, I'm sorry, President Trump, I got to tell the truth. I posted the same thing on Truth Social, and Truth Social put a sensitive content warning over it. Really. And uh, it's going on Twitter right now, but yeah. on Truth Social, it, it's it, it it got the sensitive content. So, what are warning. your thoughts? What what is what's your overall estimation of this thing going on with Twitter? Well, well, well um, outside of Sarah, because Sarah's a a, a a a different case because she's just been she was the first one to start putting out all of these things that everybody wanted to say, which is brilliant, Sarah. By the way, I mean that that's how you work the system, people. You do it just like that. Um, I, I think this is what I think is happening, okay? You're seeing all of these conservative people that all of a sudden are popping back up in people's feeds. All of a sudden, we're, I mean, me, I haven't had 80,000, but I've had, you know, about 10,000 since yeah. it's, it's turned back on. We all survived the purge that happened about two years ago where we all lost like 50, 60,000 in one hit. This is what I think is going on. I think that Twitter hasn't changed anything. I think that they are reactivating all the people that they banned and took off two years ago. And I think numbers are going up uh, because Twitter is cleaning house to before new management comes in yeah. because they know what they've been doing. They know that a lot of the stuff that they've been doing have been illegal things. Twitter knows yeah. that they illegally and intentionally interfered with the 2020 election. They know that they suppressed people. They know that they banned millions of people off the platform. They know that they've been shadow banning everybody and they don't want Elon Musk to see under the hood yet because we're business people. We know how this works. Elon doesn't have control of Twitter right now. The deal isn't even 100% done. And even if they sign it tomorrow, you're looking at six months minimum yeah. before before any real change is actually yeah. started. You're going to have a mass exodus of people qu quitting. You're going to have a mass exodus of people getting fired. They're going to have to rehire everybody. He's going to have to recalculate new algorithms, this, this, and that. This isn't going to be an overnight thing. Yeah. And so I think Twitter is trying to stay out of jail. Uh, a lot yeah. of the execs at, uh, at Twitter right now is why we're seeing surges in conservative commentators because they are doing and have been doing exactly what <laughs> what we know they've been doing the entire time yeah. and now that they no longer own the thing or are fixing to no longer own the thing it's like shredding all the documents yeah. real quick before before the taliban overtakes the you know the, the building we got to get we destroy everything and and so that's what i think is going on I, I responded to somebody on facebook said basically the same thing of course i keep doing them thanks elon you know as a tongue-in-cheek yeah and people are like, well, you know that's not how it happens. And I describe exactly the same thing. No, these are the powers that be at Twitter now. Yes. They're just, they're shredding the paper. That's a great analogy. Yep. This is one of those things. I think I saw fifteen or 16,000 new people all of a sudden. The number just grew by like fifteen or 16,000. Yep. Yours probably about the same way. And, and now Sarah's 
whole other deal. I mean, the shit she's peddling out there is legit. I have not had... I'm like, Bill, that brand, sister. I, I have not had a single verified person like any tweet I've done in over a year, to include you and you, Sarah. Don't exactly. see it. Don't that, see it. That, that's what I mean. To, to the point where I thought you were banned. No, today, freaking Ricky Gervais liked my stuff today yeah uh so i'm basically the most famous person in this building now pretty, at this point pretty much I, there is nothing somebody get glenn Beck. there's nothing left for me to accomplish <laughs> in my life anymore at this point because ricky gervais liked That's awesome. my tweet today and but but just like you said all of a sudden all these verified accounts because a lot of people if you don't know when you have a verified account on twitter there's a whole separate tab where you can literally see every other verified person that has interacted with your stuff right. at all. Uh, most people don't know that. But, but, but I, I mean it, for over a year, I haven't had a single like, reshare, comment, nothing from a single verified account yeah. in over a year. The past 24 hours, ding, 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 yeah. just all these people just all, all the time. I've seen it too. Hey, the global upheaval caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the crippling sanctions on Russian trade are showing to have massive ripple effects across the world, including right here in the U.S. It's not just the gas pump. Food prices are soaring right now. As President Biden said, with regards to food shortages, it's going to be real. Friends, inflation continues to skyrocket as the dollar becomes worth less every day. Uh, I want you to transition some of your nest egg to something of worth, real worth, with gold and silver from Birch Gold. That's right. Birch Gold will help you convert an IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered account in gold and silver. Get started now. Text CHAD, I spell it Chad, to 989898. Thousands of satisfied customers. A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Birch Gold can help you protect your savings. Text CHAD to 989898 to get your free info kit on gold. There's no obligation. To get the info, text Chad, 989898. Protect your savings with gold. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. My guest is Alec Lace. He's got a brand new book out, First Class Fatherhood, Advice and Wisdom from High Profile Dads. I've been fortunate enough to sit down with Alec on occasion and uh, have some great chats with him about what it means to be a dad first class fatherhood alec lace welcome to the program brother great to have you chad it's an honor to be here with you man thanks for having me on tell me a little bit about your journey before we talk about the book how you how this thing of fatherhood became such a passion for you yeah chad i'm a railroad mechanic i've been doing that for 22 years and i drive uber on the weekends you know as a side hustle i got four kids myself and one of the things i kept hearing from the from the young men that i was driving in my uber whenever i would tell them i had four kids they always gave me that look like i had four heads you know uh, so they always thought of it as something they want to avoid in life and not something they want to embrace so i was trying to turn that mindset around constantly over and over again and that's why I thought, man, let me just get a podcast out there. Let me push this idea and bring on some of these guys like yourself and, and some so celebrities and people that have really crushed it in life and let them testify to these young guys. Hey, I've done a lot of amazing things, but really the only fulfillment I got in my life was through becoming a father. So that, that was the whole idea of trying to do this podcast and put that message out there, man, that it's all about fatherhood and family life. That's what we need. And we got to strengthen our family units because the family unit broke down in this country and society's going down with it. Yeah, and in the book, I know that you include a lot of these voices as well as your own folks that you've talked to over over the last good while, and uh, we've had some great conversations in regards to that. There's there's no greater joy in the world than than true fatherhood, but yet fatherhood is under attack. We see how many homes and how many families are fatherless homes. Now, people want to paint that in society and say that's okay. It's not okay. Um, and and these these absentee fathers, you know that. You know, yeah, they produced offspring, but they haven't been relevant. They haven't been available. They haven't been real in their kids' lives. And we're starting to culturally see uh, the results and the ramifications of that. These, these are bad and tragic results in many cases. How are we going to tr change this trend? 
Well, there's a few factors into it. Yeah, and the statistics are devastating. I know Governor DeSantis pointed out a lot of them when he did that fatherhood bill, which I hope and pray that a lot more states will follow through with. Right. But, Chad, not only are we having, you know, deadbeat dads, dads that are walking away from their responsibility as men, as fathers, but we're also having a major problem in the family court system uh, with dads, good dads, being forced or limited with time with their kids. I mean, guys are being financially strapped. They're being humiliated and they're fighting like hell just to get very very, very minimum time with their kids. So revamping the family court system. I know we, we're in a world here where we want everything to be equal now, but in the eyes of the court system, it is not equal. Most men are all starting from under the bus when it comes to custody cases. So that's one place where we got to start. And I think another one, Chad, and I talk about this in the book, First Class Fatherhood, is that I really call on all dads to become ambassadors for fatherhood. Mm. And what I mean by that is stop with the doom and gloom of, of trying to scare these about to be dads and new dads like, oh, just wait until they start teething. Just just wait till the terrible twos. Oh, your sex life's going to go out the window. Oh, your, your personal life is going to be terrible now. And stop doing that. And you got to start motivating and encouraging these young dads and telling them the truth about the love that you feel for your kids. Just wait till you get a chance to go throw the ball with your kid. Just wait till you get to take them to the movies or share some of the food that you love to eat. Tell them about the awesome experiences that you have and pump up these young dads because we need them to stay on their post because it's so vital to our, our, our country. My 22-year-old daughter, she went to New York City last week, and she had a tryout at Radio City Music Hall. And she, she's a dancer, and I was very proud of her. And I, when she told me she was going, I said, I'll go with you. And she said, no, I'm going to do this on my own. <clears throat> right? That heart, that dagger right into your heart. And so she's like, this is something I need to do on my own. I said, no, seriously, I'll, I'll go with you. You won't even know I'm in New York. I'll, I'll just be there in case you need me. No, nope, I'm going to do this on my own. When you start to see your kids as they become adults and they start making their own decisions, it is a it is a proud dad moment. It's a scary dad moment. Uh, then my daughter she she text messaged me. She said, "Done with the auditions. I didn't make it." And I said, "I cried with her." You know, I I just said again, it was it wasn't tears of sadness or sorry. We were happy. We were overjoyed because. She made this decision, right, to get on a plane and go to New York City, never been before, and go do this thing. And then she was able to deal with some rejection on, as an adult in, in, a, in the real world. And I was there, you know, she came to me and I was able to process that with her. And it was a gift, right? And I'm thinking, who doesn't want that? right? Who doesn't want that story to be able to tell for the rest of your life? And I think these fathers who are reticent and even um, reluctant, the, these, these men reluctant to be fathers, or they, they look at it kind of with a caustic stare, they're missing out on so much of a gift of life that God wants us to have, don't you think? Yeah, I try to tell that, especially, too, to the people that say, oh, I, I never want to have kids in my life. And a lot of excuses, they'll say, oh, it costs too much money. And I'll usually tell them, hey, listen, if you think it costs a lot of money to have kids, just wait until you're 60 years old and they hit you with the bill <laughs> for never having kids. Because yeah. uh, people that are 60 and over, they live with that regret of never having children and or circumstances, whatever, that led to them never having kids. And you're never going to get to that point when you're on your deathbed and go, man, I wish I didn't have that third kid or I wish I didn't have my first child. Or, you're never going to have that feeling. So, yeah, you're, you're missing out. It expands you so much as a man. It, it makes you a better man. It gives you just so much more experience on this planet. You're talking about, uh, you know, your daughter traveling to New York. My oldest is going to be 16 years old this week. There's so many things that I've never experienced yet as a dad. I've never had a, 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 a child in the house that can drive a car hmm. or do some of these things. So I, I, I'm growing right along with them. I'm learning right along with them. And, it, and it's such a fulfilling part of my life uh, where I get to continue to grow, change, develop. And yeah, it, it's the best part of life. And, and it, it is a challenging yes. And it's about, you know, learning certain things you can control and certain things you can't control and being able to let go of what you can. A, a failure is something that they're going to unfortunately have to go through. And it's going to be some of the best parts of their life are going to come through their failures. So it's about trying to keep that big picture in mind as they go through their own struggles in life. You know, I think men are created to be warriors. And I think the first opportunity that you have to really truly be the defender in, in the world is what happens right there in the home, right? You get to defend your children, but you get to raise them with a sense of self and identity. Um, we've lost our identity in many ways, whether it's, you know, arguing over pronouns or genders or whatever it may be. People just don't know who they are. What do you think the dad role plays in helping a child, helping a young man, a young lady find their identity? 
I, I think it plays a vital role, uh, Chad. And, and just like you said, I mean, w- when you take the father out of the home and then you take God out of society, that's why we have now kindergartners and second graders learning about sexual orientation in school, uh, because we don't have those strong families, those strong fathers there. And it, it helps to create their identity. We know that with young boys that grow up without a father, they are far more likely to get into drugs, get into, you know, commit uh, violent acts. Uh, the, the jail cells are full of kids that grew up without a father. And that's not to say uh, or take anything away from single moms that are out there doing these miracles, because I, I, I never say that if you grow up with just a single mom, you can't be a success. No. But 85 percent of the kids that are sitting in a juvenile detention right now had no father in the home. So it does matter. And Chad, one other point too: succeeding in life. If you look at the top demographics in this country by the four most popular races, as far as earned income, it goes Asian. Caucasian, Hispanic, and then African-American. And if you flip that around, the highest number without fathers in the home is African-American, then Hispanic, then Caucasian, and then Asian. It goes along with everything, teenage pregnancy, suicide, homelessness, high school dropout. The stats don't lie. It's there for a reason. The father matters, and we got to get him back into the home. Those are good words. Alec Lace, you can get his book, First Class Fatherhood. Advice and wisdom from high profile dads. It's out. You can get it wherever books are offered right now. Um, you know, some people say, oh, go get it at Amazon, and then they spit because they think that's a bad word. But hey, get the book because what you've written is good words, Alec. And I appreciate what you're saying. Appreciate your message and keep up the hard work, my brother. I appreciate it, Chad. Yeah. First class fatherhood advice and wisdom from high profile dads. You got everybody in there from Eric Trump, Sean Hannity to Kurt Warner, Dana White. So whatever you're into, uh, Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street, that there's somebody in there that you'll be interested in listening to and checking out their fatherhood experience and just seeing where they've been and where you're headed and, and grab some advice along the way. I love it. Thank you, brother. Take care, man. Will do. Right, Thanks, brother. Chad. Hey, guys, Minutemen Coffee. I uh, love these guys. They are the coffee for American patriots. Constitutionally based, family-owned company, steadfast in their belief that all freedom-loving Americans deserve products from companies that share their beliefs without fear of cancellation or retaliation from the woke mob. Minutemen Coffee believes in your constitutional rights. They put their money where their mouth is, sending you a copy of the Constitution in every order so you can bring this important conversation to the coffee table and educate the next generation of constitutional patriots. This amazing coffee is small batched and handcrafted from family farms across the globe, roasted to perfection and delivered fresh to you. Minute Men Coffee hits the mark when it comes to taste and aroma. You're going to love it. Plus, with Minute Men Coffee, you're going to go to full pound of coffee for less than most companies charge for only 12 ounces. Minute Men Coffee's got a special going on right now that if you buy three bags of their Heritage Roast, add Trader Joe to your cart, and it's free as well as free shipping. So go check them out, MinutemenCoffee.com. If you don't if you don't want that offer, uh, just use C-H-A-D. I spell it Chad. Use it as a promo code at checkout and you get 15% off your order. Join the coffee revolution. Help us spread the Constitution and wake up without going woke. MinutemanCoffee.com. See you in a minute. Be sure to get Alec Lace's new book. Absolutely do not miss out on that. Hey, folks, if you need further proof that we are barreling, just barreling our way towards an Orwellian world in which careful self-monitoring of one's own speech goes from a merely annoying tendency to an absolute life-saving necessity, I present to you yet another progenitor of the tyranny to come. Google Docs is now providing assistive writing features. Now, you remember back a few years ago when Microsoft Word had that little writing assistant, Clippy, the talking paper clip. You'd be in the middle of the night four hours before your midterm essay was due, and you'd just be desperately pounding Red, Bur- Red Bulls or whatever to try to stay awake and pretend you were familiar with, much less cared about, the proliferation of nuclear armaments among third world countries after the fall of the Soviet bloc. And just as your glazed eyes move from one potentially Plagiarist, plagiaristic sentence to the next old Clippy would pop up and uh, he'd smile that little weird ass smile at you and say you know hey dumbass you clearly don't even know how to spell much less compose compa- coherent prose why don't you let me come do some of the heavy lifting for you well Google Docs is doing a version of that now except that it's making sure you dear friends and neighbors are woke enough to be part of the in crowd whenever you type something up now we all know the drill on this one 
uh, chairman should be chairperson, mankind should be humankind, and mother effer should presumably be the birthing person effer, because God forbid that a person should engage in the sort of gendered language which has helped delineate the folds of human thought since time immemorial. I'll tell you right now, if anyone in the world should be in favor of the border wall, it's the wokesters, because if you think English has a lot of gendered talk, oh, buddy, you got a surprise coming. Now, obviously, this thing is a pain in the ass from its very conception, and you want to know what's funny about that. Vice did a piece on having this thing tested out, and they hated it. Vice. Listen, when the wokest of the woke folk don't even like what you're doing, you got a problem, Google. Nevertheless, I don't think that it's very likely to go away. Maybe they'll just have an option to turn it off if you don't want it. But listen, I know I'm preaching to the converted here mostly, but it bears repeating that the absolute worst thing anyone can do is control and compel the speech of another person, no matter what that other person's intentions are. These people who want this kind of thing to be ubiquitous in the daily lives of all mankind, yeah, I said it, these people don't realize that forced inclusivity is merely the photo-negative image of forced exclusivity. The very visible inverse proportionality is precise. It's the feature, not the bug, in other words. But I don't think a lot of these people living in Wokeville realize it because, let's face facts, a lot of them are pretty dumb Listen, Google Docs, I want you to let me know if I'm ending a sentence with a preposition. I want you to help me eliminate dangling participles like the back of a mullet after the conclusion of a lost bet. And yes, I even want you to let me know if I spell Albuquerque wrong, although whoever would. What I do not need you to do, what I do not want you to do, is tell me when I'm not being inclusive enough. Hell, what if I want to write something racist and vile? What if I want to? As the vice folks point out, correcting me is how we get dog whistles. And ain't nobody got time for that. Now, you go to this Twitter thing that's going on, Graham. And um, somebody said to me, they said, uh, I said, I've never, I've never won, I've never pushed for anybody to be kicked off of a platform. Mm -hmm. I might block you. If yep. you're just an ignorant and annoying ass, I might block you. Yep. And somebody said, oh, yeah, we should let David Duke have a platform. And I'm like, my question to them was, did David Duke's tweets tempt you to become a member of the Klan? <laughs> David Duke, piece of garbage that he may be as a human being. I still don't want to push him off of a platform. I can choose not to listen to him. Yeah. I mean, that's like saying, hey, you got weird ideas. Maybe we should just kill you because you got weird ideas. Yeah. Let's just complete. Let's just let's carry it to the nth degree of, you know, exponential conclusion yeah let's just eliminate people well i got in an argument with uh <clears throat> uh the new malcolm x sean king uh, oh martin this luther morning. cream yeah yeah and uh you know i actually saw a, a lot of conservatives uh when it first happened saying what account should be uh kicked off first on the left and i actually came out against that very heavily i said actually I, I i i hope this leads to a situation i really think that elon musk and this is not me kissing his butt this is me just telling it like it is he gave the best definition for free speech i've ever heard i always used to say free speech is there to protect the speech that you don't like right he took it a step further and he said free speech is somebody that you don't like being allowed to say something that you don't like right and so it's it's the double hit there so sean king was like so we should sh should we just allow people to talk about how they you know hate jews and jews need to die and all this other kind of stuff um and and i simply responded with nobody is pro hate speech nobody is pro anything like that what what we're against is we do not trust the far left-leaning executives of these major companies that have the keys to the public square, them being able to decide what hate speech actually is. Yeah. And so everything, all these rules about content moderation and all this other stuff, it needs to be bounced against the only document that we have that that shows what free speech actually is and the realms of which you're allowed to be able to say things and what not like what is free speech not uh, uh protect calls for, for for acts of violence that lead to violence etc cetera, etc cetera. same thing you can't yell fire just to yell it out in a crowd because people can get hurt and things like that i mean th there are constitutional 
barricades around what is protected under free speech. The problem is we're not going constitutionally based in our decisions from these companies. They're going emotionally based. Yeah. And we forgot the golden rule of the First Amendment. I, I truly believe the golden <laughs> the First Amendment was written because of Ben Franklin. Because Ben Franklin made everybody mad all the time. Most people hated Ben Franklin the majority of the time. Yeah. He was always stepping in it. So I really like to believe that they wrote the First Amendment literally looking at Ben Franklin when they were writing it. Being like, <laughs> like, like, like Bruh, there is no it's way. You. It's you. They're this like, is we why want we're you to fly that kite in the, <laughs> yeah. in the electricity and, out there. Exactly. I, yeah, but, but they wrote it knowing that the only way... <sighs> Uh, d disagreeance and, and divisiveness is actually a good thing. I've written about this in my book. Slavery used to be a very divisive topic. And it used to be, you know, we used to be very divided on that. But being able to talk about divisive issues and argue and scream and holler at each other about these things led to the eventual ending. It abolished it. it exactly. And we wouldn't women to vote. <laughs> yeah, you know, all of these things were divisive topics that people felt passionately about, that people got upset about on one side and the other. And it's and it's division on an idea or, or a subject yeah. is the only thing that's made us able to be the country that we are today. And now we just run off emotion. Yeah. And, and, we, and we forget our principles. And so th there is a fine line. Obviously, you can't have massive amounts of people calling for, you know, we all need to rally at Mercury Studios and shoot Chad Prather in the head. Like, I, you know, I get it. And nope, I don't know anybody that's pro that, you know, pro, pro those calls for violence and stuff like that. But you should be able to tell somebody, you know what, I think you're a complete and total idiot yeah. moron this is the dumbest thing i've ever heard and not be harassing and bullying somebody shut up shut up you're a grown adult i uh, like like you can't harass and bully people under the age of 18 cool i agree with that keep, keep your keep your comments about stupid things kids say <clears throat> david hogg even though you're not 18 years old anymore yeah. but but the point is grown adults let them go at it yeah. let it let, let them let them go Hang tight real quick. Uh, go to a quick break. More to talk about. I uh, want to welcome back an old sponsor. They're new again. Uh, Bambi, small business owners. I want to ask you something real quick. Have you uh, been at a company with bad HR? The bad news is that one complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. The good news is Bambi is here to help small business owners implement good HR practices. Bambi is an HR platform built for businesses like yours, so you can automate the most important HR practices, get your own dedicated HR manager. First, Bambi's HR autopilot automates your core policies, workplace training, and employee feedback. Then your dedicated HR manager will help you navigate the more complex parts of HR and guide you to compliance. Available by, available by phone or email or real-time chat. An in-house HR manager, they can cost you up to $80,000 a year, but with Bambi, your dedicated HR manager starts at just $99 a month. No hidden fees. You can cancel any time. Run your business the way you want to do it. Let Bambi run your HR. Go to Bambi.com slash Chad right now for your free HR audit. That's B-A-M-B-E-E dot -E com slash Chad. Bambi.com slash Chad. Be right back. So, during the break, we were talking about TikTok. Yep. You and I, we really can't do TikTok. I throw some stuff up there every now and then. I can't dance. <laughs> so, I had to, I had to figure, I had to figure out, I'm already at a disadvantage. I can't dance. That's funny. People need to get your books. You got two books out now, right? It's crazy, right? Yeah. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Two. You America 316. America 316. And then Dear America. Yeah. I know. Well, I know. I put a lot of thought in that title. <laughs> it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Um, and uh, you also endorse. I endorsed your book. You also endorsed my yep. book. Your name is right there on the cover of that one. Am I crazy? Uh, get all those books where books are offered. You, you have a good time with them. Um, always appreciate your voice, your stance, and uh, just your unapologetic attitude. It means a lot to me and your friendship, of course. Um, we've had a lot of things that have happened in our life. Uh, we've yeah, dealt with we a lot have. of crazy. And uh, we, we've been friends for a long time. 
One of the things we've been doing on this show is Chris likes to surprise me with a TikTok. Okay. I've never seen it. I'm ready. So that's why I ask about TikTok. Let's do it. Uh, and just get a comment. This should be fun with Graham. Go ahead and play it. <laughs> well, it looks like Twitter's gone. They accepted the money. And Elon Stalin is taking over. So f*** you, Twitter, and goodbye forever, you insane Q-like forum. Or soon to be insane like Q-like forum. Peace out. Bye. Elon Musk, this is directly to you. Enjoy Twitter. I just deactivated mine. I will not be reactivating it. Enjoy. I deactivated my account and deleted the app. That's what I think of it. Elon Musk. Today, Twitter has announced that they've been bought by Elon Musk, or however you say his name. Um, I'm not interested in staying on Twitter anymore because of this. And I think there's a lot of people that are about to leave. So I just wanted to let everyone know that you can find me here. I'm gonna also share this on Twitter before I deactivate You're my account so that anyone who wants to follow me You're can find app. me here as well. Hey, I did a thing today. I deactivated my Twitter account. You can too. All right, let's take a minute. Uh, I got it right now. That's a lot of Democrats that hate on an African-American. <laughs> That's all I know. The, every single one of those people are Democrats. You remember this. It's the most yeah. hate I've seen since Democrats had the KKK. Yeah, they definitely hate, they definitely hate <laughs> an African-American and Elon right. Musk, or however you say it. The, the smartest person on there was the person that told everybody that they could find her on the app that she's making the video on. Yeah. She was already on the app. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the first lady on there I thought was Sarah Gonzalez. I was like, I, I was like, whoa, that's Sarah. Yeah. Anyway, it's everybody's worst nightmare um, for a mom. I, you know what? Good. I, listen, honestly, this week it's been the most fun I've had on social media in a long time. I've had, I've had a lot of fun, man. It, it's it took me back to the reason why I enjoyed social media in the first place. Just say what you want to say. If it's a joke, you know, whatever. It's yeah. good stuff. Well, people can't take jokes anymore, Chad. They cannot I'm take surprised jokes. you still have I, a business. Well, you know, <laughs> I've, been in, I've been in court with Facebook several times now. <laughs> uh, literal court. Um, they won against us last week, by the way, for those of you keeping score. But we're not done. We're still going with it. Graham, where can people find you? Man, just just, just Graham Allen just everywhere. Google just Google Graham it. Allen. Just Google it. We're all over the place. Uh, we've actually started speaking in churches now and everything like that, too. And so so we're everywhere, man. we got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I Now that the campaign's over, as I'm sure you are, I really enjoy being able to be me. Yeah. And, and, and say what I want to say, how I want to say it. Real quick, do you have people who come at you thinking you're supposed to still be in campaign mode even though you're not campaigning anymore? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, so you can't say that. You can. Oh no, I oh, can. Yeah, I can. I'm a private citizen. Uh, and and the ironic part was, we even were when we were campaigning, but nobody acted like it. Uh, man, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, I, I think that there is so much more power in what we do here on the outside. Uh, that's the biggest thing that, that that running a federal campaign taught me. Yeah, was that it is just it, we have a much bigger job here. And we have the ability to affect so much more out here than we do in there. That, there's no question about it. Yep. No question about it. A lot of folks don't think that. Uh, they don't believe it. But I've seen it firsthand. Yep. Worst, best experience of my life. Worst, best. That is a good way yeah. to put it, man. Seeing behind the veil. Mm -hmm. It's ugly. It's, it, it, change, it changes you. That, yeah. There's no going back. It changes you. I am a different person today than I was a year ago yeah uh and and i know you are too and so it changes you and there's no going back grizzled hardened oh yeah real quick break we're gonna close it out don't go anywhere be right back Hey guys, as soon as your stimulus check comes in, I want you to go subscribe to blazetv.com slash Chad. Use promo code Chad. Listen, there's no such thing as a free freaking lunch, people. And you keep watching us on YouTube and all the clips on Facebook and social media places and everywhere else you listen to it where podcasts are offered. You don't even go leave a five-star rating and give us a good review to help us in the rankings. Do that. That doesn't cost you anything. But go to blazetv.com slash Chad. Subscribe. Support us. People, you know, you don't want to think about doing doing videos in the truck. 
I never got paid for doing that. Mm. So help a brother out. Help a brother out. And then come see me Friday night in the woodlands at do do Go to watchchad.com. That's where all the fun stuff is. Folks, sign up. Watch Overtime. Have a great weekend. Graham, love you. And we'll see you next week. Love you. God bless you. Bye.